is there a possibility, Pastor, that a minister can serve God and fail to meet the standards that God wants for, for his ministry? Is yes. it possible that you can serve God without uh, meeting those levels that God wanted you to reach? Yes, there is what we call a human error. All right. Human error sometimes comes through misinterpretation uh -huh. of the expectation. Uh -huh. You can have human standards that a kind of dogma you believe that God doesn't expect this. Uh -huh. So when God expects, when God communicates through what you believe he shouldn't, you doubt him. Yes. Like who, who could have, which minister of the gospel in the days of Jesus could have believed that somebody can be born from Nazareth? Nobody. And therefore, as a, you, you, you fail to eat the mark because you have your human interpretation of God's expectation. There is a way you expect God should behave. So if God behaves in a manner that you didn't conceive, you doubt that he might be an angel of light, uh -huh. not God. Uh -huh. So sometimes when we misinterpret, we fail to have the ability to interpret God, we fail. And therefore, it's much possible that you can fail to realize the expectation of God in your ministration, in your ministry. Mm -hmm. There are many, many other reasons as to why some people can exceed prematurely before accomplishment of the purpose. Uh -huh. But the expectation of God is that we all fulfill the purpose for which we were called. Pastor, in a, a span, let's say, of seven years, yes, yes. you have been fully in ministry especially at Gospel Embassy Chapel. That's true. You started the ministry with a big number. Uh, I'm asking this because uh, I've, I've, I've seen your ministry. I've seen some of the pictures, the congregation, the audience that attends your ministry. Sometimes you can see thousands and thousands of people seated what, what has been the secret for only seven years that you, you have grown from, let's say, a few numbers to that big number? First, I want to say, I have not grown. Yes. This is the doing of God. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me one, one time, he wanted me to give him the secret of the thousands who attend our, our hearing service meetings and... Uh, and uh, the music and, uh, and the music extravaganza and our healing crusades. Uh -huh. Sometimes 20,000 people, sometimes more. Yes. But the secret is simple. is to know who you are and what you are doing. You know, Pastor, I am a mouthpiece of God. Yes. Mouths don't speak by themselves. They speak on behalf of the owner. Right. And therefore, being a mouthpiece, it is God who must deposit a message. Actually, I can say God does three things in our meetings. Number one, he gives me a message that he wants his people to hear. You know, before God raises a minister, he must have had a people who will necessitate the raising of that minister. You see, you can ask yourself a question. Between Moses and the Israelites, who were first in Egypt? Right. Israelites. It is the Israelites. So who necessitated the, the coming of Moses? The Israelites. They called unto God to send them a man. So God raised a man as a mouthpiece to speak on his behalf. He put his message in the man. So God does, number one, he has people who need this kind of message. Mm -hmm. He raises a man as his mouthpiece. Then he puts his message in the man. Okay. So God put his message in me. And then after he has put the message in the man, he now gathers the people to come and listen to him through the man. And that's number two. It is God who brings the people. After God has brought the people, then during that time, he confirms his presence by signs, wonders, and miracles. Actually, that is the evidence of the presence of God. Uh -huh. He confirms his presence by signs, wonders, and miracles, and even distribution of gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That is God. And that's how he works. 
And therefore, God knows how much he has deposited in mouthpiece A and in mouthpiece B. And if we deposit this adequate message in me that requires 20,000 people, then he will bring those 20,000 people to hear their own message through me. Uh -huh. If he has deposited, for instance, a message in you yes. for one million people, yes. he will provide ways and create avenues and bring the one million people mm -hmm. to hear the message. So it, it's, it's, I can say it is God's creation. And when you give the message, it confirms by signs, wonders, and miracles. You are saying, Pastor, number one, that first God has a people or raises a people who need a minister. That is it. He, 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 he raises the congregation. Yes. Yes. Before he raises a minister. Yes, yes. Before a savior comes, <laughs> there must be a sinner. <laughs> is there a possibility? Yes. That uh, a minister can be raised and go to a wrong audience than the audience that God it, had. There's evidence in the Bible that a minister wanted to go to a wrong audience. <laughs> you know this man that was swallowed by, by fish? You know? Jonah. Jonah. Yes. He had chosen a different audience. But he, in his case, God compelled him to go to the right audience. You know, Peter was raised as a minister to the Jews. Yes. And Paul was raised as a minister to the Gentiles. Uh -huh. There are always probabilities and possibility of going to a wrong audience, especially if you are not keen on the expectation and the will of God. But if you are led by the Spirit, you can never go to a wrong audience because God never raises a minister before raising an audience. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It is the recipients that compare God to raise a mouthpiece. Because God may be wanting to speak to a certain people, probably in Tanzania, but he doesn't have somebody to communicate that message to them. So what does God do? He raises a mouthpiece that is reliable to whom he can entrust that message. You know, trusting God is one thing, and God trusting you back is another. Amen. God cannot trust you more than you can be trusted. Uh-huh. God cannot trust you more than you can be trusted. Yes. You even asked about our ministry. We didn't begin big. Uh -huh. We started small. How, you know, many, how many did you start? This I think I, I was with my wife for about six months. Yeah. We were two of us. Six months you were two? Yes. After one year, we became about four, four people. And then I, we, uh, I, we, I, I think there is a minister out there. Yes, yes who is listening to that and has been in ministry for a year or two or five. Yes. And perhaps they are five or ten and they are wondering like they can't be successful. Yeah, some ministers think like uh, they were not the call of God. No, if you are persistent and consistent and you are convicted, yes. definitely you are on track. You might be broke at the moment. We have been broke. Yes. You might be having no house rent. It's a common thing. You might not be having a car. Don't even say, I want to have a car, probably like the other man of God, or, a, or an aeroplane, or something. Just understand first, you are a mouthpiece of God. And God has put his message in you. The amount of message that God has deposited in you is equal to the congregation he has arranged for you. You know, Pastor,